Hello! Oh dear. Everything's going wrong again. This time with the camera. So I'm going to have to turn the camera off for the moment. Hang on. The, ca the camera is just not working properly at the moment. I don't know why. It's very annoying. It's very annoying. So I can't do much about it, guys. So I'm going to try and sort it out with a different camera and hopefully that'll settle it down. But now I'm facing the wrong way. And everything is a little bit out of sync. Anyway, good afternoon. Here we come, a Yusuf Treadhead Sarah. Hello. Kafuthles Treadhead Pete Sentry. And Macmate. How are you all doing, guys? Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with the bloody cameras at the moment. They're being crap. Crap, I tell you. I don't know why. But uh, yeah, it is what it is, what it is, what it is. Anyway. Hopefully, I'm going to turn that down. You can have a little bit of music. <laughs> so it's overloading the system for some reason. It's knocking my frame rates down. I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, it's very strange. Well, that doesn't help. So the cameras are being really weird. Um, let me just try something else because that, that's pretty annoying, you know. Yeah, it's uh, dear me. Why is it doing that? Don't, don't know. <laughs> it's <very> annoying. <laughs> Take that off. Kind of doesn't help. Stick you back on. Kind of really doesn't help. Oh man, what is going down here? I don't know. Anyway, anyway, we're here anyway. Yeah, it's out of sync. Everything's out of sync. I don't know why. Really weird, man. Maybe it's because it knows I'm trying to move house. <laughs> anyway, how's everybody doing? I'll turn that camera off now. It's no bloody good to man the beast. Oh, this camera settings are just shockingly bad, man. Let me just sort the camera out because I don't know what's going on with it. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> That's so shit. I don't know why. It's knocking. It keeps telling me there's an overload. I don't know where the overload is. But I haven't changed anything on my computer settings anywhere. Anyway. Anyway. Look, let's get into this, because we're going to be all day out. <laughs> Ta-da! Let's have a look what's in the store. Is there anything decent? So we've got the American Invasion, 15,000, you know. What do you get for that? Well, for 15,000 you get well, 14 containers, which may contain a tank, if you happen to be lucky. But it's going to be an American tank, if you happen to be lucky. So, there's a list there. What's the drop chance? Well, it's 10%. Yes, 10%. That's pretty high for a change. Hey, Galaxy. But 10% is still 10%. And it's still 15,000 gold, guys. That's, you know. But you might get a tank. Then we've got the collect them all containers. That's a 5% drop chance, but you might get a tank. That's going for 7,000. But you only and you get 15. 15. So you get 14 for 15, or 15 for 7. Okay. However, there's only a 5% drop chance. So you've got more of a chance of getting to in the American containers than these containers. Then we've got the Predatory T26 E4. This is a Tech Tree tank, the Super Pershing. It's going for 5,500. Now, at first you may say, Fujit, that's really stupid. Yeah, <laughs> it was a container explosion, Bill. Not a fire, mate. <laughs> um... So you may think you can get this tank whenever you want. You went on for 5,500. But the thing that happens here is you get 30 days of premium, which is which is in itself is worth quite a lot of gold. You get half a million credits, a garage slot, a legendary camo, the American Eagle attachment, because you all want the American Eagle attachment. And of course, you get a Blitz avatar. <laughs> God, man. You need the Blitz avatar. Oof. Hey, Tommy D. So that's the Predatory T26E4. Keep going down, there's all this month here that you can get stuff for the 
rush you through those tiers a lot quicker so you can spend more money because you'll be clueless when you get to tier 10 with your, your mere 200 battles. But it doesn't matter because you can rush there and die quicker. But then we've got this, the Centurion Mark 5 Wood. Now, a couple of things about this tank. Firstly, it is a good tank, don't get me wrong. It's a nice tank, it's a lovely tank. It's a mother beautiful tank. However, number one, it's a tier eight. Yeah, you heard me, it's a tier eight. Uh, it is a premium, so you know you are getting a decent tank. But for 15,000 gold, you can get a tier 10. Uh, for 15,000 gold, and there it is there, the 1, 2, 1, B. I'll come back to that in a minute, because I want to go through this one. This is a tier 8. Okay, you get three mystery boxes. Ooh, mystery. And there could be anything in the mystery boxes, because they're a mystery. What do you get with this? Well, you get the Centurion Mark V one, which is called the Dingo. Or if you watch uh, the very last Riddick movie, it's a Dingo Dongo. It's a Dingo. It's got not all the equipment unlocked. It's got the Dingo legendary camouflage. Ooh. And it's got three mystery boxes. And it's got a boomerang avatar, to, just to show you that it's an Aussie tank, okay? Now, What's in the mystery box? Well, each mystery box includes two certificates for 200 free XP and a random reward for a tier 5 to 10 tank. Gold credits, free XP, premium cap. Now, this is the thing, just in case you didn't know what's in the mystery boxes. Uh, but it's a, it's a certificate, okay? Like a charm, <laughs> basically. It's not actually a tank. Um, so you're not getting a free tank. You're getting a certificate for a tank from 5 to 10. Okay, so... It's a good tank, however, however, it's got all the equipment unlocked. It's got a special camo, it's got a special avatar, and it's got three mystery boxes, and it's a tier eight. Now, let's move down, because for the same price, here is a tier 10. For this tank, you get the 121B, a tier 10 medium tank. Mm -hmm. You get the garage slot, you get all the equipment unlocked, you get the legendary camo. And you get the Blitch Order Legendary Avatar. But you also get 25 certificates for 5 XP. This is a higher tier tank. You would have thought the tier 10 would be worth more than the tier 8. But because the Dingo Dongo is pretty rare, it's only been out once, lots of people want it. Hence the reason why the price is pretty high. And as Yusuf says there, I bought it in a heartbeat. So there you go. Don't ever let it be known that the consumer does not drive things, because clearly they do. However, it's a great tank, it's a good tank. I'm not gonna tell you how to spend your hard-earned cash, it's up to you. But just be careful, guys, it's a tier eight. 15,000 gold for a tier eight, when you can get in the same, same shop at right at this moment in time, you can get a tier 10 for the same price, with the exception, that comes with 25 times 5 boosters. This one only comes with three mystery boxes. Woo! Mystery boxes. Mystery boxes. Anyway, moving down. We then have Massive Assault. So, you can get two tanks here with all the equipment unlocked. Um, and an avatar. Another boomerang thingy. Because you can see there, boomerang. And you get the tier 8 M6A2E1 and the tier 7 M6A2E1. One's an experimental, one isn't. Um, for some reason it's just dropped down there it is so you also get the rare camos both time tested and oxidized you then get 20 certificates for five times xp two american invasion containers and of course a boomerang epic avatar that's for six thousand that's for seven thousand five hundred guys if you don't want some of the bits and bobs that come with it like if you don't want the uh the certificates then you can get it for six thousand five hundred so, mmm, 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 mmm. That's not a bad deal. It's not a bad deal, considering that the Dingo Dongo is one tank for 15,000. I mean, you can get two of these massive assault bundles and still have change. Unless, of course, you want those boosters. Then you won't have change, obviously, because it would be the same price. Kind of stands to reason, yeah. Ooh. There, still got the American Invasion stuff. And then we got the T2034 Independence. Or you might want to get it with the HTC. Again, 7,500. Loads of boosters. And you get four American container boxes. And you get two tags. Admittedly, 
One is a tier eight and one is a tier seven. Admittedly, one is a tech tree premium, one isn't. Admittedly, they both come with in your face American camo. However, look what they get. You get the garage slot, you get all the equipment, you get the independence camo, you get 20 Civic 5 XP, four American invasion containers, four, and Hawkeye legendary avatar. Hmm. Better deal than the uh, Dingo Dongo, to be fair. And we already spoke about the Golden Dragon. Woohoo! And then, if you want, if you've got some of those spare season coins going, because, you know, season coins are normally done by people playing tournaments. So, here's the thing there are three types of tournaments tier five and six, tiers, well, tier six, basically, but you can go out in tier five if you're that crazy. Tier eight. You can go out into tier 7 if you're that crazy. And tier 10, or you can go out into tier 9 if you're that crazy. So, most of the people who get the season containers play tournaments. Okay? Play tournaments. So just consider that. So if you play tournaments, chances are you're playing either tier 6, tier set, tier 8, or tier 9. Now, if you play tier 6 tournaments, you're only going to be rolling out in one of maybe four tanks. And it's either going to be the ARL or the VK36 or something along those lines, the Comet or the, sorry, the Cromwell, blah, 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 or the Panzer 4S. I don't know anybody who takes a Churchill Mark VI into a tournament. Not a single person. Nobody. Why would you? It's a shit tank. That's if you play tier six tournaments. If you play tier eight or tier 10 tournaments, what are you going to do with a Churchill Mark VI? You want something that's got a bit of bump. You want something that's going to help you in your tournaments. I mean, that's the whole reason you're getting your season coins. Duh. Anyway, but it's for 8,300 season coins. So if you want a tier six to go out in tournaments, that ain't the one for you. Get the ARL. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Stick it in your garage if you happen to win. If you're still playing tier eight or tier six tournaments and you haven't got your tier eight, then this is a better deal. 2,800. You can take an eight into battle. You get a common certificate for researching a tier 8 vehicle, plus one certificate for the Oriental Waves rare camo for a uh, tier 8, plus 10 days of premium. So, that's not bad, <laughs> to be fair. Then you get the research boost, because why not? So, for 8,300 you can get a pretty mediocre tier 6 Churchill, or for basically just under 5,000, which is a lot cheaper than the Churchill, you can get a certificate for a tier eight and you can get one of those. You can get a load of boosters, booster boosters. And then you can get a bloody Churchill if you want to, the tech tree version, or even 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 better than that, you can get a, a Churchill Black Prince, which is a better tank in a better tier. Anyway, your call. Cool. Then you got the collect more containers again. Then we got the avatar containers because obviously you need avatars. You know, you'd be stupid not to get them. And then you got the usual bump there. What about the bundles? Well, we've still got the premium passes. And then we've got these new ones coming in. So there are these new bundles, okay? So we have Triumph Power. So what we got here? 37,000 gold. So if you bet, if this is $100, by the way. No, it's not. It's about $90. So for ninety dollars, you're going to get a three hundred thirty-seven thousand five hundred gold, which is basically a hundred dollars worth of gold, plus six million credits, plus one hundred days premium time, plus one thousand five hundred rare boosters, and very importantly, a Lotus Legendary Avatar. So you actually get quite a lot, but it is quite expensive. It's ninety dollars, okay, and you can see there, it's you only get one. I don't know what this is, this locky thing. It doesn't really say. After purchasing this bundle, you can grab 20 American Invasion containers for free. Free, I tell you, that's, so you're spending a lot, but you're actually getting a lot back. And obviously it goes down, so we've got, what, $90 here, about, for what, $45, $50 almost there, $15 here, five or six dollars there so it's not too bad then we've got this interesting thing TS5 okay so the TS5 recently hit the store did a review on it um, gave my pen is worth so it's a tier 8 and it's basically a TD now 
I wasn't impressed with this because it came in containers for real life cash rather than in containers for gold. Now, I would prefer this being gold, okay, to be honest with you, rather than cash. Because to guarantee you this tank, you're going to spend approximately $100. And what do you get for your $100? Well, I'll be honest with you, you get a pretty mediocre tank. Because you're not going to get all the equipment unlocked. You don't get any of that sort of stuff. Now, you get a pretty, pretty mediocre tank. It's gun, whilst powerful and with a good reload, has got no good depression. I mean, five degrees is meh. And it's got no left or right traverse, realistically. Its arc is very poor. Very, very poor. Now, what makes me laugh is this. Loads of people, especially YouTubers, really shat on the turtle from a great height. Yet the turtle is a much better tank than this. Oddly enough, because at least with the turtle, you've got some gun depression. You can you can kind of hide it. They're both they're both slow. They're both cumbersome. They're both fixed casemates. But uh, this one, seriously, in like in, unless you're desperate for it, guys, my advice to you is just wait, just wait, because it is not a super super impressive tank. Not really. And if you were to come back and go much better, everybody would be much happier, believe me. And you can see, I mean, it's going to cost you 25 charms. It does come with charms at least, but you need 25 to one, unlike what it was, uh, which tank recently didn't come with the charms. Mm, I can't remember. It's so like the, I mean, the Defender or something, it didn't come with charms. Something didn't, one of them didn't come with charms, and you had to really try your luck. But I can't remember which one it was. Hey, Martin, how you doing? So, at least this one comes with charms. But the thing is, you're not getting an overly impressive tank. You're really not. And it, it's, you know, you know, you can say I haven't bought any containers. But if I want to buy the containers, I get this one here for 10. So I get 12. So that's, that's like $50. Yeah, well, it's actually more than that as well. Just a little bit more than $50. You need 25, remember? That's only going to get, if I buy two of those, it only gets me 24. 24 that's a hundred dollars and I need to buy one more which is here which is three dollars it's cost me close to 105 dollars to get this tank guaranteed ha huh. okay good luck with that you're not getting a hundred dollars out of me sorry we then got this for like five dollars because you're not allowed to seal club anymore that's why you know 5.5 came in to stop you little pesky seal club is going out there so what we're doing instead we're going to take all the tanks away from you and now we're going to make you buy them for real cash. And okay, it's cheap. It's $5. But you're going to buy your T1E6, your T2 light tank, and your T7. All of which used to be in the game. Hmm. Hmm. I see where you're going with this. <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. And then we got the basic stuff here, the war chest, the basic kit, the essentials kit, the starter bundle. Everything you need to get yourself rushing through those tiers, basically. And then we've got the gold still, and the gold is still there. As you can see, spend 27,000, well, you know, buy gold for the price of 27,000 and get another 27,000. Get 54,000, basically. That's not bad, is it? That's okay. That's pretty cool. So can't really complain with that. They're still there. They're all still there. So you can buy lots of gold and look good. Then you've got the defense budget here at 37,500. Mm, but that's hundred dollars. But you get, you get for 37,500, spend $100 for 37,500. Okay, okay, okay. Let me work this out because I am a bit, being a lawyer, I'm a mathematician, not at all. My, my sums are not very good, but hang on. So, if I spend like close to $100, I get 37,500 gold. If I spend close to $70, I get 54,000 gold. Hmm, 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 hmm. If I spend $50, I get 35,000 gold. But if I spend $100, I get another 2,500. Hmm, 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 hmm. Really? You think I'm like, uh, do you think I'm out of my mind? Why would I buy this when I can buy this and get more gold for half the price? Makes no sense to me. Makes no sense to me. There we go. So anyway, that's what's in the shop. 
realistically. And loads of people are going to be like, woo, shut up, everything's great, everything's lovely, everything's brilliant. And on occasion it does come with good stuff. But um, be careful of the prices, guys, seriously. Oh. Yeah, nobody says anything. Right, so with that, what else have we got going down? Anybody in there? Oh, I've got Wild Runs Alpha. Oh, a rare and wild Wild Runs Alpha has jumped into the chat. Ooh, here we go. When I say the chat, I mean Discord. I didn't mean the chat chat. I mean Discord, okay? So he's obviously fresh from his Asia Gold tour stream. Hello, Jack. Would it? Oh, he is talking to us. There you go. Look, he's saying hello. He's having fun. He's being good. <laughs> How's it going? Pretty cool. <coughs> Unfortunately, I'm not streaming um, the summer season because I'm in the middle of a I'm in the middle of a house move, so I can't stream because my internet will be disconnected in a couple of days and then reconnected somewhere else. Yeah, as they say over here, inshallah, it may not be connected. <laughs> it, it may take a bit longer. Uh, it's it's the look of the draw. That's just the way it works. So, so that's the reason why I'm not streaming. But. Um, yeah, it's keeping an eye on it. It's looking cool, looking interesting. Um, I've heard a lot of through the grapevine people are saying, oh, you know, some interesting clans are in there because some clans aren't in there, basically. Zafar, so how are you doing? How are you? Oh. No, that, that doesn't surprise me with Asia, to be fair. I mean, as, as far as clans competitive clans go it's not like they're inundated in swamped with hundreds of them they've, they've got they've got pretty few really uh, whereas the eu server does have a lot of clans so and it, and it will probably continue to grow which is a good thing Well, it does. It does. Well, let's get some replays going so you lot don't get too disappointed. We're just seeing a turtle floating around the screen in a garage. Um, moving away from tournaments just quickly. I was on the game. I didn't. I haven't played the game for a couple of days. I played last night for the first time for a few days, and uh, my my ping was terrible. Absolutely terrible. And then Yusuf came to join me in a in a tomb, and his ping was terrible. Absolutely terrible. And I was saying in the stream, you know, I don't think we can uh, blame some of the players because it looked like a lot of their ping was terrible. And I don't know why. But even now you're seeing that my FPS is dropping on the game to like 40. The, uh, it, 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 it's, it's been terrible the last day. And if you notice, they've changed the garage, number one. And if you also notice, for a short period of time, the API wasn't working. That means Blitzstars wasn't working and other things. And that's now working again. But now, I mean, last night was almost unplayable. Almost unplayable. It was crazy. So, you know, if you guys are suffering a heavy ping, I don't know what to say. Unfortunately, Spicy, I don't have many replays. And the reason I don't have many replays is because I am losing subscribers left, right, and center, and they're not sending me replays anymore. <laughs> so, so since my um, tit-for-tat with a much more influential and famous YouTuber, I've lost a lot of subscribers, uh, basically. So, 
But it was always expected. Uh, I expected that to happen, to be honest with you. So, so yeah, I've had a, a, a lot less said to me, by the way, <laughs> with regard to replays. So it's just the way it happens, spicy. So unfortunately, yeah, you're either going to see some of the same replays or you get to see my replays. But it, but trust me, you want to see other people's replays. You don't want to see mine. You know, you, you, me just noobing around in a tank is no good. You want to see other people actually playing them as they're meant to be played. <laughs> so Sarah's saying Ping was horrible yesterday. Martin's saying the game kept crashing for him. So I, I can't do that, Spicy, because I don't own it. Um, so I can't just take people's replays, I'm afraid. It's not allowed. I, I won't do that. Um, Treadhead Pete, I get that quite regularly on my streams. Um, where first game out, I generally log in first game out and the uh, the turret locks up and i can't do anything and i have to absolutely close my ipad and get back into the game no good even closing the game i have to literally close the ipad and restart my device to get back into the game to do it so so yeah um somebody mentioned earlier about what are we talking today um are we going to do drama or this or that well the drama's over isn't it to an extent to an extent because uh, despite the fact that you, you you can only trust certain YouTubers, especially those who didn't get a birthday gift, he's finally got his birthday gift. So does that mean he's no longer trustworthy? I don't know. I don't know. It's all crazy. <laughs> it's all mad. It's all mad. <laughs> so, Mako, how are you doing? So it's all it's all madness. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, please, uh, please send me a Progetto 48, uh, 46 Ace that you've done, George. I would really appreciate that. So, yeah, um, you know, but these things happen. These things happen. And, you know, that's why I haven't done my giveaway yet, because I no longer have 6,000 subscribers. <laughs> I have less. I have less. Less I tell you. So, yeah. So I can't, do it, 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 I can't do the giveaway until it settles down, to be honest with you. I mean, it's just the way YouTube rocks and rolls, I guess. So there we go. And then, of course, having a dig at another YouTuber yesterday on, on a different thing uh, didn't go down well either. That sort of pissed a lot of other people off. But these things happen, and there's a video about that later today. Not about the YouTuber, by the way. Not about the YouTuber. Uh, about the, uh, the message in that particular video. Because I don't agree with the message, basically. And I had a long think about it. And then I watched another YouTuber's video today. That other YouTuber I'm going to mention, it's Bushka. And I thought the message he sent out in his recent video was, his video was entitled something along the lines of, why do I keep losing high damage games? Or something along those lines. And you know what? I thought the message he sent out in that video was 150 billion percent spot on. He, he didn't try, well he did, a little bit, but the main focus was not on criticizing his team, but on criticizing himself. And what he should have done better. Whereas the video that I saw recently by a much more famous YouTuber than me, who doesn't speak French, by the way, um, was that, look at this team, they're all a load of potatoes, um, they're not doing what they should be doing. Despite the fact that the particular player has like 60 odd thousand battles and a very healthy 60% plus win rate, and the remainder of his team uh, all had less than 3,000 battles. So, hmm. So, I will have a video coming out this evening about that. Saying that, guys, we need to stop making these assumptions that either A, everybody's at the same skill level as us, or B, they have the same experience as us, or C, play the game for the same reasons we do. And we need to stop bitching about our teams. And I'm, I'm equally to blame. And I've had to add a long reflection over the last few days. I think we need to stop blaming our teams and we need to start asking ourselves the question, could we have done better? And I've, I've answered that question in a lot of my games myself and I've come to the conclusion, yes, I could have done better, to be fair. So that video is coming out later today because I'll be honest with you, there's nothing you can do about the player base, none of you. Not a single one of you can change the player base. 
So you've, we, we, we as a community are faced with a fact, okay? The fact is this, the player base is evolving, rightly or wrongly. It's either going, you know, you're getting more players who are rushing the tiers, you're getting more players with lower win rates, okay? So the player base is evolving. There is nothing you can do in real terms that will change or alter that. The only thing that can change and alter that is if we, the more experienced players, start to consider how can we educate these players. And people turn around to me and say, ah, oh, but they're not interested to you. And, I, and I, I, I cry bullshit. And the reason I cry bullshit is because if they weren't interested, then Bushka wouldn't have 75,000 subscribers. Meezy wouldn't have close to 60,000 subscribers. Droodles wouldn't have 55,000 subscribers. And Pantaflea wouldn't have 50,000 subscribers. So I know for a fact there are at least 50,000 people out there speaking English across all the servers who are interested in this game and getting better. So I don't, I don't buy the crap that people aren't prepared or people aren't interested. Ah, but Mako, Mako, this is the point. See, that's the assumption. Therein lies the assumption I'm going to point out in my video. <laughs> okay, basically, so your question is, but what if you do the best you can do with your current skill level, but your team could have done better? Right. First thing we have to, we, first thing we have to do is drop the assumption that our team is at the same skill level as us. That's number one. Once we drop that, we then ask the question, did, my, did the players play to their skill level? So if your team is filled with 40% win rate players who've only got 2,000 battles under their belts, then don't expect too much from them, okay? But look at them and say, did they do the best that they could have done? And did they do their best? Now, if you're a 60% win rate player with your 50,000 battles, Ask yourself the same question. Did I do the best that I could have done for my team? In other words, did I tell my team to go this way or that way? Did I tell them to focus this tank or that tank? Did I tell them to hold positions or not hold positions to attack or not attack? These are the questions that we should be asking ourselves. Not, well, I did okay. It was everybody else around me who failed. Because... I'm starting to believe now that as as you as we get because the player base is evolving, the better players and the more experienced players, okay, we need I'm not a better player, but I'm an experienced player. We need to educate those below us rather than keep blaming them. That's the thing, I think. I don't know. Where's Jack? Is he still here? <laughs> there he is. Because I've, I've, I've only got two screens because I'm on a Mac. And Mac only supports two screens before it goes boom. But uh, we'll see. So, um, so, Jack, what's your take on this? Because we are where we are. We can't change the game development. We can't change the player base. The player base is what the player base is. when you have done uh, uh, all, uh, done the things you could, then I think it's fine. Um, then, uh, but um, yeah, I think it's fine if, if you have done everything that you could. And it's not a win in the end, but I mean, we all win and lose games, right? So it's, uh, and, it, and this game is not about individual players. It's about the, uh, a team play. It's about a team. So... Mm. It's all right if you lose a game uh, and if you have done everything 
uh, that you could. Um, just focus on the next game. Maybe you have better luck. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing was there, guys, that uh, Discord decided that it didn't want to transmit anything. <laughs> but, oh. But I, I, don't worry, Jack, I got you halfway through. So it, it, we finally, I finally sorted Discord out so it was transmitting. So there we go. Um, good. good. A couple of things. Jack makes an important point, okay. And it's a very important point because sometimes we forget this. It's actually a team game, funnily enough. It's a team game, not an individual game. We play it as individuals. And we want to do our best and we want to get the big damage and the ace masteries, etc, etc. It's actually not that. And we ourselves have to be realistic here. The idea of any game is to win. However, however, you're not going to win all the time. You're always going to lose some games. Losing is also part of the game. It's part of any game. So you've got to take into account that you're going to lose some battles. Simple fact of life. But the general idea is to try and win battles. Now, a couple of things, two things in my opinion, help you win battles. Okay, two things. Firstly, your skill, your skill. So if you've got skill, like if I just take one of any random player from end game, they're all 70% win rate players, they've got skill. Okay, so they've got really good skill. The chances of them winning games are pretty high, number one. Number two, you need bad players on the other side. <laughs> Funnily enough. <laughs> because without the bad players, your skill is, is sort of counteracted. So you need the bad players to get better yourself. Funnily enough. And over time, and again, it's in my video that I'm releasing later, is Royal Fatness says, somebody asked him in a live stream the other day, how is it you're so good? And he said... I practice and I practice and I practice and I practice. And that's the that's the thing. You know, a lot of these really good players, guys, they, they practice a lot. They practice a lot. And it, it makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. Well, that's the other thing though, Treadhead Pete. I mean, Treadhead says it doesn't matter what you do, somebody's going to be pissed off at you for something. That's true. However, there's also this point. Doesn't matter how good you think you are, there's already somebody better than you. There's always somebody better than you. Which means, by default, and by pure logic, that means there's always somebody worse than you. <laughs> it's just, just common sense. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. So, you know, and it, we have this sort of realization. Well, actually, we don't have a realization. We have this we have this thing inside of us as, as players in this game that it's actually not our fault <laughs> it's the team's fault it's that player's fault it's that guy's fault it's somebody else's fault it's not my fault it wasn't me who made the mistake it's because the team didn't support me it wasn't me who made the mistake yellowing in on the right side it's because the team never came with me <laughs> so we automatically decide to see fault in others rather than ourselves which is why bushka's video is very good because Bushka's video doesn't do that. My game, it's, I've just worked out, it's the game that is overloading OBS. Um, so I may have to dump the game, guys, because the game is overloading OBS because of the very high ping. So I'm gonna play this replay, I'm gonna drop the game, and I'm gonna see if that helps settle um, the issue. Because the ping on the game at the moment, from what I can see at this end, is huge. And my FPS is going, woo, on the game. Well, actually, it's not. It's going the other way. Woo! <laughs> Everybody makes mistakes, Tommy. Everybody makes mistakes. But the trick is, and which is why I like Bushkin's video, the trick is identifying the mistakes you made. Identify the mistakes you made. And then work out how it all went wrong. And that's what Bushkin did in his very, very, very good recent video. And I do reference it in my video because it is a good video. And I think it sends a very good message, which is stop beating up your teams because, you know, you need to beat yourself up first a little bit. Make it, they, they account for a very small percentage of the player base, uh, the, the trolls out there. There are trolls, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. There are trolls, there are idiots, there are people who just wanna ruin it for everybody else. 
because you know that that's just the way they are but they're a very small percentage you know they're a tiny percentage of the game i would say the vast majority of the players actually want to improve i mean i've I, i've seen on the eu server recently for example there's a lot of people complaining about the player the the, the, the teams on the eu server and i've i've seen let me just drop this game a minute because I think the game is absolutely yeah exactly look so i'm going to leave that on at the moment sorry because it's the game that's draining obs it's just killing obs with it as, as obs is struggling to keep up with what the game is churning out so where was i yeah so i, I see a lot of players on eu at the moment with like twenty thousand battles in say 42 percent win rate okay now I'm not being funny, but if you've done 20 odd thousand battles, then the chances are you're, you're taking the game pretty seriously. And the chances are you're just making mistakes. And you're just getting into that rut of, I don't know, going into tanks that you can't play, going into tanks you don't understand, and, and not playing to the best of your ability because you're stuck in this rut. Hence the reason why you're still a 40% win rate player. Taking into also account that we all have a natural, a basic natural skill level okay basic natural skill level so you know in, in the example i give in my video that's going to come out is basically this there are literally millions of kids all across the world playing football millions yet hardly any of them maybe one maybe two if we're lucky maybe three will ever get to the dizzying heights of what Cristiano Ronaldo or Lionel Messi are. Now, it's the same with Blitz. Those players, Ronaldo and Messi, have natural talent. Perfect, they have natural talent, okay. So, what you then do, they build, they train, they work hard, they build on their natural talent to become the players that they are today. It's no different with the likes of his Royal Fatness or whoever you consider to be an OP player. It's no different. They've got the natural skill there. They've got the raw talent. But they still have to build on it. Now, some of us, we don't have that raw talent, you know. And we all have different skill levels. And some of us, it, it, it takes a lot longer to us to be good at the game. For various reasons. For various reasons. You know, we may, we may not have the same reaction times. We may not have the same eyesight or foresight or whatever. So it takes us longer to get better. And this is why I never bemoan people's win rates as such. I always say experience counts for a lot. Okay, it does in my book count for a lot. Because the more experience you have, the more it should become apparent to you that going this way or that way is a bad mistake. Take my recent video about vineyards. Okay, I generally see very low, you know, low win rate players. I'm talking mid 40s down. Or low battle count players, and I'm talking 5,000 down, going to the city every time, going to the sea cap. They don't, relevant what tanks are on the other team, just head for the sea cap, because why not? And it's just a farm fest for the team that doesn't go to the sea cap, to be honest with you. And if the other team goes to the sea cap, then you're just in a big brawl, and it's, it's, a, it's a nightmare. So hang on, I've got, because because don't forget, Jack and I both do tournaments, and Jack is also a, a better player than me. Jack, do you go to the C cap on vineyards? It, never. <laughs> Why, Jack? <laughs> uh, unless I'm flanking. Well, it, it's too flat. I mean, you have that kind of the the terrain that you can use to hold down, and I mean, you have more oversight uh, in the north. Uh, in the central to the northwestern area, you have a bigger overview there, and you can hold down. No, Jack's nicely, played, so I would Jack, rather go there. No, firstly, a couple of the, if, if you don't know Jack's stats, he's 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 a pro player. He's got challenges, tour avatar, and all that sort of stuff. He's he's done it. He's cut his job. He's cut his mustard in the upper tiers, doing the top stuff against the top players. And you've just heard it from him. I don't go to the, I don't go to the city. Why would I? It's ridiculous. It's flat as a pancake absolutely flat as a pancake whereas if you, the middle ground for example is just filled with so many umps dips bumps rocks boulders you've got so so 
so much more protection. Yet I see it all the time now. The inexperienced players hightailing it to see. And in the video I show, I don't do much damage, but that's not the point. The point of that video wasn't to show you how much damage you can do. The point of that video is to show you if your team goes to the city, how much of a nightmare it then is for them to get out of the city when you're not in the city and you're on the ridge line. And if you ever watch the tournaments, you, would, you know, sometimes I tell people you need to watch the tournaments to see these, these sort of supremacy strats. You very rarely see them. They may take a couple of tanks to see just to put pressure on, but you'll see majority of the brawling is around the A and the B cap on vineyards. It, these things, is, this is what I'm saying about education and experience goes a long way. Middleburg's a difficult one, Yusuf. I'll be honest with you. And the reason I say it's a difficult one is the the, the, the city strat on Middleburg can work. So, for example, if you're in a team that I think is very heavy, for example, let's say you've only got, and I've seen this happen, where you've got one medium and you've got a load of TDs and a load of heavies. That, that can happen. Then going up to the C cap, may not be your best advantage but it depends on what the other team has got and this again all comes with experience so and, and you know this full well Yusuf sometimes we'll go to sea sometimes we'll go in the town it depends on what the other team have got if the other team are are very very heavy and your team is pretty mobile then chances are they'll go to the sit go to the city of Middleburg allowing you to get to the top of the to you know to to, to fast cap one of them with your little tanks and then send everything out up to sea to stop them from coming out. So there's a lot of oohs and ahs about what's going on on that map. But the sea, and, I, and I don't see the same mistakes being made on Middleburg as much as I do on Vineyards, to be honest with you. What about you, Jack? What would you say about Middleburg? Uh, well, most of the time we go to sea. Uh, I mean, if, if, I, if I'm if i in the medium or light, definitely mm -hmm. uh, sealed away. Ne never city. Mm -hmm. Um but if a, if it, if I'm a heavy tank and there are no like mediums or lights, yeah, maybe city city might be a better choice. Uh, but uh, but then I I usually I think uh, the city side is not really good as well because uh, similar problem as uh, the vineyard so, and it's uh, mm. kind of exacerbated in a way that um, you have the high ground on the sea and you have the low ground in the city. I mean. Playing city strat is really risky, and it, yeah, it it doesn't always pay off. But uh, to to be honest, uh, that's true. In, you're right there, Yusuf. I mean, once you go down, it's it's hard to get up. If you're in supremacy, however, don't forget on Middleburg, you've got two caps down and only one up. And um, this is what I'm saying: if you're a very, very, very heavy team with TDs and heavies in in not many mobile tanks then sometimes a uh, the city strap can work on Middleburg. However, if you've got a mobile lineup and not very heavy tanks, or your heavy tanks happen to be the likes of the E5 or the 215B, then you're on flat ground in the city and you've got the same problems that you've got on vineyards. Whereas the benefit of your, your tanks like an E5 or a 215B means that you're losing that advantage because you're no longer able to go haul down and that's a big problem it's a big problem so a lot a lot does depend on what team you're in etc etc so but the thing is tommy you say that if you manage to cap a and b on middleburg then you can hold and, and guard cap if you've got a reasonably good team on the other on the enemy side with with good players believe me they will they will feint a flank on one side to try and cap somewhat to try and steal the cap on the other side and i've seen that happen many many times and they'll use their ability to to do that um so yeah it's 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 it all depends it, it depends but you're right to an extent yusuf that there's an advantage um, there's an advantage we're going to see if, you, if you're mobile because it's very difficult then for the enemy in the city to actually, they're shooting uphill and if they need to break out of the city 
I mean, if we're talking encounter now, rather than a supremacy, if they need to break out of the city, then they've got to cover a lot of open ground to get up there. And that, that ground between the city and the top of the hill is, is what they say in the military. It's dead ground. It's, it's just a death trap. Because as you all know, if you drive heavy tanks, the moment they start going up a small rise, they slow down. And it just becomes a night. It becomes it becomes a death trap, basically. So there is a lot of that. But the the reason I say that sometimes the city strat works is because I keep going back to that incredibly heavy lineup used by I believe it was C four. Uh, although Jack can remind me against uh, against Mercy in the uh, in the Blitz Cup last year, where they took everything and iron fisted through the town. In Middleburg and absolutely decimated Mercy. Just decimated them. And they had 50 bees and thing in mouses and things like that. C4. Was it C4, Jack? I don't know. I think I think that was a different different uh, different one. Um because I was thinking local versus endgame and uh, uh during the spring season where local won 2 0 and the first the first win I think it was 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 it the first win or second win? Um, no, this it was it was it's definitely the RU uh, server. It's definitely the RU server. And the Blitz Cup last year. It was definitely RU. That was the fifty. That, that was the fifty Bs and the kind of Bs. unrelated to what we're uh, yeah, unrelated but, to what you were the point you're trying to make. No, I was saying that the the city strat on Middleburg can work because they took they took I think yeah, I can't remember how many fifty Bs was, and a couple of mouses and they just steamrolled Mercy mm -hmm. through the city. Yeah, but I, 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 yeah, I think that was a different story. I, I don't think that was the point uh, you were trying to make because I definitely saw teams just going straight onto the B cap from the north side and t uh, and they took out the tank trying to cap B uh, at the very start. I think I saw it a couple of times, um, not just the oh, EU server, but or I think Asia servers too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's various different mechanisms on the map. And it, it, it all depends on... I mean, it all depends on, on the lineups, to be fair. But your normal mm -hmm. strat would be to go to C or to go up. Because you're, you, you've got more defensive positions up than you have down. And that's the main difference between the two. Even on encounter. Mm -hmm. So if you, if, you, if you just look at encounter at the spawn points... Even if you just start going up the hill and then stop because they've gone into the city, there are parts on the hill that give you haul down positions that can absolutely decimate the enemy team if they try to break out of the city. So there's a, there is an advantage of going up rather than down. Mm. And I'll, I'll guarantee you this. If any of you have played, I mean, I think Yusuf, I think, were you tuning with me the other day when they, they were capping... The, uh, they, they were capping on Encounter, Middleburg. And we had no problems going down there and resetting the cap. After taking out a, few, a fair few of their tanks up the hill, we then went down and reset the cap quite easily. Because that cap is quite easy to reset, to be honest with you. So... Hey, Miles. So it, 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 it's half of one, six of the other. So... But Vineyards is even more straightforward than that. Because there's only one cap in the city. One cap. That's it. And you're fighting for one cap. Where outside the city, you've got two caps. Much easier. Much, much easier. Where's Everton? I haven't seen Everton. Where's Everton there? Hello, Everton. <laughs> I've not seen Everton. So. But uh, where we go? We've got uh, Mako saying, I remember a battle on... Uh, Middleburg where LTTB and VK got hill first. Enemy slaughtered the LTTB because he basically yolloed. VK didn't back up. They blew him away too. After that, we were doomed. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. basically that does happen. We had one like that yesterday, uh, Yusuf and I, where on Halas, I think, not was it Halas? I can't remember if it was Halas or a different map, where we were pretty much in control and then our standard B decided, no, I'm fed up of living. I don't like I don't like living after thirty seconds of playing, and he just yellowed straight into the enemy, followed promptly by the T fifty four. No, it was um, it, it was um, Camp Stiller, 
he decided I'm fed up. I'm going to yolo into all their all, all their heavy tanks because they're all there. So he did. And then the fifty four the T fifty four said, "Well, that looked good fun. I'll try that as well." So he did the same thing. And then another one of our tanks said, "Oh, those two had a good move. I think I'll give it a bash too." And then before we knew it, there was just Yusef and me <laughs> against seven. <laughs> it's like okay, this ain't gonna work. <laughs> all around, all around the A cap on Camp Stiller. So hmm, that that was an interesting game. That was a very interesting game indeed. So again, I, I, you know, I mean, it's sometimes players just make you scratch your head, and they were good players, by the way. The guy in the standard B, with, you know, I can't remember now. I think he had to like seventeen thousand battles and fifty-two percent win rate. Um, so they're not bad players. But uh, as I said, there's been a lot of ping and stuff like that. So you know, you have to sort of take that into consideration. So dings a lot. Auto loaders and reloaders have changed the game massively. How does Wargame keep the order and single shot tanks relevant in the future? Good bloody question. A um, couple of things. Firstly, I think... Okay, let me just get it out there. I don't think MM is broken, okay? A lot of people do. I don't. Um, I think MM does what it's meant to do, which is it assigns teams uh, based on tanks and tier. Doesn't look at your win rate, doesn't look at this, doesn't look at that, okay? But now, now, I do think MM is slightly broken though, with regard to the amount of autoloaders and reloaders we now have in the game. So, for example, you could, in theory, quite possibly, and I think I have seen it once, be on a team in tier 10 that is completely composed of autoloaders, reloaders, because you work it out. So let's take it from the top. Let's have a look at the light tank. Well, there's a bat chat. Bat chat's an autoloader. Then we've got your medium tanks. Well, what have we got in medium tanks that are autoloaders? Jack, tier 10, autoloader or load or reloader? Nope, he's not there. Well, anyway, we got the Progetto. What, 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 what? <coughs> tier 10, autoloader or, or autoloader or auto reloader. Tier 10. Medium tank. Uh, Progetto, TVP, and also, yeah, these two, yeah. There you go, you got the Progetto and the TVP. Heavy tank, AMX-50B, T-57 Heavy, and the Kranwagen. TD. Now... And then it's got, Yost. There we got the F4, the FV-4005. We've got, oh, and the Yo, of course. Yes, you're right, Jack. We've got the FV-4005 and the Fosh. There you go. So you can realistically roll out roll out in tier 10 in a team that is comprised completely of auto or auto reloaders against a team that is just single shots so i do think the mm needs to be tweaked so one side doesn't have an advantage with respect to that because it can be a lot of dpm trust me 250 bs in the hands of players who know what they're doing is a absolute nightmare to counter it really is I mean, I rolled out the other night with Addictivo. I think it was Addictivo. Um, and I rolled out also with uh, K uh, Yoda, or General Kenobi, whichever name you want to call him at the time. Both in 50B platoons. Both those players are very good players, unlike me. And we absolutely decimated the enemy. Decimated them. Because you've got two 50Bs working in tandem with players with experience and very good win rate to know what they're doing. And it's a nightmare, uh, which is why you see, for example, for example, you'll see some of the pro teams in the tournaments taking out double 50 Bs. There's a reason why they double them up, because boy, they're effective, really effective. Same with the crown wagon, it can be really effective as a double, as a double crown wagon. Because if you time it right, when the one's reloading, the other one's shooting, and it's a lot of DPM going out. What do you think about that, Jack? It's probably gone again. Yeah, um, especially double clippers uh, in a platoon. Uh, it can mm -hmm. be really effective, and you can have a have a look at my win rate or in Projecto sixty five. I think I I have I, I platoon uh, use I use this tank to platoon uh, for most of the time, and the win rate is uh, it's a little bit um, uh, unbelievable. Absolutely, it, it it is because they are effective. 
in the right hands, they're incredibly yeah. effective. They are incredibly effective. So here's one. Yeah. And if you can communicate well with your teammate, then it's Ooh. chef's kiss. Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I lost my hit. Wait, how you doing, big fella? Um, okay, one from I know. Hey, Fuji. Today I was in a 1v5 situation in my back chat, 25T. Three were low, one AFK, one half half, and all of them are paper armor. I lost the game. Can you give me any suggestions on how to clutch? Well, before we suggest on how to clutch, we need to see the replay um, to make sure that you focus the right tanks in the right order and did the right things. So that's what we'd need to look at. We'd need to see the replay. Uh, and the reason I say that is because there may have been nothing you could have done about it, to be fair. <laughs> it depends. So if you've got the replay, by all means send it across and we, we can break it down for you. Not a problem. Not a problem. A meal two, um, a meal three also, is the RA CCC Mark V in crates again this time or what? Yes, it's in crates for gold, for gold, for gold, for gold, for gold. <laughs> it's in crates for gold, 15,000 or 12,000, it's up to you. Um, JN Cloud Dragon, Ooh, my wish list for Blitz players. One, don't AFK. If you aren't going to play, don't press the battle button. Uh, let's just deal with that one. Sometimes JN, they can't help it. Um, I've been kicked out of the game on... Um, Martin earlier said he's been kicked out of the game a few times uh, over the last day or so. That's not his fault. And I've been kicked out of the game. That's not my fault. So AFKs aren't always because of the player. Sometimes they get kicked out of the game because of the game. Sometimes they kicked out because of their internet connection or whatever. So it's not necessarily always their fault. However, the serial An AFKs, important phone call important phone call um, there could be an emergency you never know you know yeah you know yeah. the guys i don't know the, the player's bestest friend's hamster is having a, a heart attack <laughs> you know and he may love that hamster so you can't knock people for that however however there is a caveat when it comes to serial players who go afk that's a bit different and um i think you know, Wargaming should do something about that. So if you, if, if, a, if a player is getting sort of, you know, so many complaints because he's constantly AFK over a set period of time, then Wargaming should do something about it. They probably won't, but they should. Second, don't YOLO and die inside the 42nd mark. I, I totally agree with you. However, that brings me back to the point I was trying to make earlier, Jay and Cloud Dragon. We also, as experienced players who enjoy the game, we I think we we need to turn the tables a little bit, and it becomes kind of almost an obligation on us now to try and point these these bad players in the right direction, so to speak. And not nastily, not like you're a noob, why yolo, but just ask them after the game, why did you do that? What did you hope to achieve? Something simple. Don't don't have a shout at them like you're an idiot. Why did you why did you rush and die? But just ask them a normal question. Why, why did you do that tactic? What did you hope to achieve? It'd be interesting to see what some of them say. Play your role. Tier 8 Evers are not TDs. Now that one I totally, 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 totally agree with. And uh, I wanted to do a video on know your role on the battlefield. And uh, well, you know, not many people saw it. But I did that video. And I agree with you there. And that again comes down to education. People rushing through the tiers and not learning the tiers properly. So the whole idea of tiers one through to five is those training wheels. And if you if you rush through those training wheels, then you know you don't know what your tank's meant to do and it's bloody stupid. <laughs> Number four, know the map and where you need to go. Again, this is based on experience and also um, knowledge. I agree with that. Did I see the 50B? Yes, I did. I did, actually. I'll speak to you about that. Yanni! How you doing, mate? Thank you for popping in, you OP demon, you. Um, Dark, the only reason I'm not showing replays at the moment is because the game, the there's something wrong with the game, ping-wise, and it's absolutely killing uh, my FPS in, and uh, outputs on OBS. It's the only reason I'm not, I'm not showing replays at the moment. You can see the game screen there, but I've actually closed the game completely because it's just killing everything. Um, 
so it keeps doing it to me but only once a while in the game there you go well there is that sometimes your mom calls you for dinner and you have to go or uh, or get your butt kicked <laughs> I know, you can send it to either my uh, email address, which is fujitsblitz at gmail.com, or you can find me on Discord, but all the links are somewhere in the in the YouTube thing, and you can just wing it across to me there. How would you track if they are serial AFK? Wargaming, no. If you have a look at the end of any battle screen, it tells you how far you've travelled. <laughs> Wargaming have all that data, funnily enough, against almost all players. So they do know. They have they do know. I can't, George, that's the problem. Bye, MacMate. Thank you for popping in. Always a pleasure, my friend. Yeah, OBS is having a fit when I open the game. Don't know why. It's funny you should say that, Tommy, because um we were discussing this last week about tanks um and what i think is possibly noob friendly and i also debated it with juicy tender steak um as well later on um a couple of days later i believe now we came to the conclusion everybody i think everybody's come to the conclusion that probably the most noob friendly heavy tank in tier 10 is, is the is4 okay it's pretty easy to use you can't really go wrong with it Clippers can sort of decimate it, yes they can, but the IS-4 is probably your best bet if you're getting into that tier 10 heavy. When it comes to mediums, and Jack will probably disagree with me here, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on the side of, of some others. The E50M is probably the most forgiving medium in the tier, I think. Because it's got a gun that is very reliable. It's got armor, especially on the turret. And it's got a little bit of mobility. Okay, it doesn't have the same mobility as the T-62A. Um, but the T-62A, I think, is more a finesse tank. And I know a lot of people don't agree with me there. They think that's new friendly as well. But I don't think it is. I think the T-52A, the T-62A is... It takes a lot of getting used to it, I think. Especially if you're a new player. Hey, Netforce. What do you think, Jack? Uh, I I disagree. <laughs> I think the game is a, a bit difficult to play. Uh, I think it's particularly it's a little bit big, and and if you show your lower glaciers, then it's a big lower glaciers that you will show. It's good for brawls though, but as you said, also the mobility can be an issue. And it can be yes. The gun is it's okay. It's not. It, I I would say uh, other mediums have better guns. Which one? Which 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 would you say is the most noob friendly medium then? I actually would agree with uh, T sixty two. I I I mean it's uh, I, I mean it's really good hold down, really good gun DPM and accuracy wise. Uh, a little bit of armor, so you just have to find a good uh, area to hold down and also you know just uh, run around. It's, I think you can do a lot with it. So which would you say is the worst or the least noob friendly? Least noob friendly. This would be interesting uh, to find out. F four two o two. Ah. Uh, or of AMX 30B. See, see, see. But it... See, a lot of people disagree with me on that. I said the FV4202. Not necessarily because it's the FV4202 and it's got absolutely shockingly bad mobility for what it is. But also it's got no armour, realistically. And it's got... Uh, oh. But it, it does have a pretty good gun. But the problem I find with the FV4202 for newer players is that they don't really know about the Hesh and how to use the Hesh properly. And, and that's a big deal. That's a big deal with that tank, mm. and it's always a it's always a toss up between that tank and the Leo one as the least noob friendly. The thirty B I had forgotten about, but I agree with you on that. The thirty B is not yeah. exactly an easy tank either, but um, yeah. um, because and these then you take have one skill, to one. but they take skill. One to one takes skill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, these tanks take yeah, skill. Yeah, I mean what? Yeah. And um, you know the Leo one, the thir the thirty B, and the one two one, they they take skill. Whereas I think the four two o two takes a bit of both skill and experience because you need to know how to use Hesh properly. If you can't if you can't use the Hesh properly, then you're just going to be doing splash damage and wondering, oh, why are all these good players doing four hundred and fifty damage on their shots <laughs> and I'm not because <laughs> they're hitting the tanks in the right place. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> so
But Mako, you should never feel like a moron for doing zero damage. Everybody does zero damage. Everybody. I'm telling you. Everybody. Even the best players. Even the best players. Um, Yusuf and I rolled out last night. Came across a team that was comprised of a platoon from APA. And we turned them over and trounced them. And they're good players. They're pros. They're really good players. So everybody, do, everybody has bad days. Everybody has bad games. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody makes poor decisions. Everybody has RNG issues. Everybody has ping issues. And on occasion, everybody does re well, really shit and does zero. <laughs> it happens. It happens to everybody, mate. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you want to experience a lot of zeros, just, just roll out in the Death Star a lot. On some games, you will do 5,000 damage. And on a lot of other games, you do zero as everybody focuses you and wipes you out. And whilst you're still trying to reload after your first shot's dispersion, sent it into a different map. So don't beat yourself up too much about uh, doing zeros. Yeah, we'll have a look at that. Not a worry, my friend. Let me uh, let me see. All right, let's see if I can get the game. I'll put the game back on. I'll see if I can get something because it's going to drop the FPS. But we'll put the game back on. Let's, uh, so you're going to hear a lot of noise because that's the way it works now. Yeah, automatically it says overload. So we'll put it on and then everybody can have a look at it. <gasps> I like the bat chat, by the way, the tier 9. I do like it. I think it's a great little tank. And I think it's a great little tank. See, it's already killing my FPS. Thank you, game. <laughs> Peter. Oh, Peter's here. He can break it down a lot better than I could. He's a better player, basically. The topic of today, Peter, is we're going to have a look at this bat chat replay, if it's going to load. But I'm having problems with the game at the moment. For some strange number, no reason. For some reason, just doesn't want to play. Yeah, the game is being real. Here we go. Okay, so you're in the bat chat. Oh, you're in the tier 10 bat chat. Okay, that's fine. Let's have a look. The game is really struggling, guys. Here we go. Ping is really high. Okay. So you have to excuse the FPS because that's uh, basically OBS trying to keep up with uh, OBS is trying to keep up with the game, which is suffering at the moment. Uh. <laughs> okay, so you've taken a great position. You got up to the hill. You've got a good position here. You're putting some good shots across. Oh, that was unlucky. The MV. Yo managed to get one into you. Not to worry though, you managed to get out of there. At the moment you're in a good position, Prob probably the best position for a bat chat, although Peter would disagree. That's every, by the way. He would say, no, you should have gone to the other side. Mainly because he, everybody doesn't like going to them. The, the mines is a boring map. <laughs> You're not rushing, you're taking your time. I've seen nothing wrong with this at the moment. Mm, nice shot. Got out of dodge just in time there. That was nicely done. Again, apologies. Oh, he's AFK. Yeah, no harm putting a shot in where you reload. Hmm. Yeah, the IS-4 gun can be a bit of a pain. Are you moving around this area nicely?
and looking at the mini map, I mean, you've got a lot of a lot of your a lot of your team is sort of around the same area. They're not on the hill, um, but they don't seem to be doing much. To be fair, they're not because there's only there's only a couple of tanks over there. We've got the MV, which is now backing out. So we've got three tanks there. And if you have a look, the majority of your tanks are at the bottom of the hill. They're not pressing, not pushing. And you've already, you've already told them where the TDs are. So we know where the majority of the enemy is. They're not here. So your teams aren't helping you that much, to be honest with you. Well, that's understandable. It's like, how on earth did a 268 manage to get up there? Wow, that's interesting. Now you're going to get caught with these lot, unfortunately. Oof. So there's two, two tanks left on your team. Oh, unlucky. Good big bounce there. Now it's just you against too many. And yeah, it's going to be tricky. So it's still you against six. You've done well to get this far, to be fair. Oh, that was... Uh, could have done without that, but not to worry. Now it's 1v5, but you're a one-shot to everything, basically. Good bounce. 268 is the nasty shot from behind. Yeah, there was literally nothing you could have done to win that. Um, you did exceptionally well, I'll be honest with you. And there, there, was, there was literally nothing you could have done to have won that. Um, the reason I say that is because the other team had this pattern. You would have finished, you know, you could have stayed up top and you would have finished the Yag Tiger. The chances are you would have finished the Yo, and the 268 was AFK, so you could have finished him at any time. But you, your threat was this pattern, and there's absolutely nothing you could have done about that. And if you look, the pattern is very, very healthy. I don't think you should beat yourself up too much, to be fair. I think that's a very good game. I think you played it very well. Um, on the grounds that it was 1v6, and you managed to whittle it all down and do 5.7k damage, I think you did exceptionally well, considering that you did more damage than the rest of your team combined, almost. <laughs> Jack, did you see that replay? Me? Got, no. Yeah, no. So, <laughs> he didn't see it. And every isn't in the chat, so you can't say he was here. But I wouldn't beat yourself up. There's nothing you could have done, uh, mate. Nothing you could have done that would have changed the fortunes of that game. Not a thing. You, you played it very well in very tricky circumstances, is the honest answer. It's a damn shame you didn't get it. It's a good game. It's a good game. Very good game indeed. But uh, I wouldn't beat yourself up over that. I really wouldn't. So... As I said, you know, you could have focused this tank on that tank, but you still wouldn't have got round the, the pattern, who was almost full of health, and also on a good game as well. So he would have got you eventually. You were a one-shot, effectively, um, to him. So he would have got you eventually. But, uh, yeah, the, the, don't beat yourself up over that. There's, there's nothing, you, you, nothing you did. 
you, you played that played that very well indeed. Yeah, well, make it that sometimes happens. Sometimes that's the ping and the dispersion. Um, it can happen to the best of us. I mean, uh, and, and then you have to factor in ghost shots. Sometimes ghost shots do happen. But it's the dispersion mainly. So if you aim the tank's reticle, if you're not waiting... See, the way it works is this. Take the FV, the, 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 the Death Star. The Death Star is a really big reticle when you first aim. And you, over time, you see that reticle getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, if you try to snapshot, then basically the, the shot in real terms, according to the game parameters, can go anywhere in that circle. Anywhere. Okay, see you later, Yusuf. Thanks, mate. So that, that's one of the issues that people don't generally realize. It can go anywhere within that big circle. So, and over, over distance, you have, to, you have to appreciate this. So the big reticle is what you'll see right in front of you. Now try and imagine that reticle, I don't know, 100 meters away. It gets bigger and then bigger, yeah? So the, the reticle, the further away it goes, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So when you fire, for example, the Death Star, and you see it sort of winging off miles in the opposite direction, it's because you fired when the reticle was too big, and then you have to look at where the target is and then try and work out how big the reticle would be at that end. And that's where you get this strange shots. It's, it's, it, it, it looks weird, but that, that's why you get it, basically. And this is where the dispersion comes in. So, so it, sometimes it looks like, well, actually, it's fired outside the reticle. No, it hasn't. Because you're looking at the reticle really close. It's like that part in Father Ted when he talks about the cows. He says, "This is a this is a small cow. This is a this is a real cow, Dougal. But those out there are far away. <laughs> That's why they're smaller. And it's the same here. So the reticle's big here, right close on the gunner. But then as you go further away, it tunnels out. It goes like that. So that's why sudden tanks are not very good for sniping. For example, the mouse." Don't ever snipe in a mouse, ever. <laughs> You'll just have a bad day. <laughs> what do you think about Jack? <laughs> What's your input on that side? Uh, well, not just the mouse. Never ever snipe in an E100. E I see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not a good tank to snipe in the E100. I must admit. <laughs> it, I think it's one of the. I think it's the worst accurate gun in uh, worst accurate. Heavy, heavy gun. In, it's not in the, the best. entire game. Yeah, it's not the it, best. It, that it, and the um, mouse are pretty. I think it's the worst accurate, least yeah, well, accurate. Yeah. Well, that and the mouse are pretty. Both of them are pretty, pretty dreadful. It can be pretty yeah. dreadful. I, I, um, yeah. They're not the best, and their DPM is not the best either. I mean, obviously, the mouse's DPM is really not good. Um, but these aren't sniping tanks. Don't don't camp and snipe in those sort of tanks. Uh, retro guy, every good name would take is taken. Would disagree with you there. Mines is not always about the hill, funnily enough, and uh, it, it, it it does help. It does help. But, uh, but I've seen teams win without taking the hill on mines. It all depends. I mean, I I won a game recently in the fifty B where we didn't take the hill but you have to work slightly harder <laughs> to, to win those games <laughs> to be fair but you can do it you can do it yeah don't camp in a 50b worst thing you can do but uh i mean that's that you're getting to see that a lot more in the game at the moment people doing you know things that they shouldn't be doing like camping in tds oh, sorry like camping in heavies the new TD meta is the E100 and the mouse. Or, as I saw uh, the other day, the yo. I found a yo camping at the back of a map. On two games. One that was in a recent video and one that um, was on a live stream. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, I've never seen that before. I mean, this is a gun that, uh, this is a tank that has, it doesn't have great mobility. 
but it's pretty difficult, if not nay on impossible, to track the damn thing. And it's got a pretty good gun. So why on earth would you stick it at the back and do nothing? <laughs> and it's got a solid, solid armor profile. But strangest things have happened. I mean, Yanni who was in earlier. Is an incredibly good player, by the way. In Vale, he's, he's, he himself is a broken player. He makes everything look OP. He uh, he was in one of my streams, laughing his socks off because I was uh, I was frontlining in a grill because the E one hundred was camping at the back. Can you believe that? How outrageous! And we won the game, and I did like five k damage in the in the grill, and the E one hundred did like five hundred. <laughs> So, yeah, you know, these strange things do happen. Yes, that's that's what it was, Kerfuffles, on Yamata Harbour. He was in the corner behind the house. So you come hurtling over the hill, and then, lo and behold, there is a yo behind behind a house in the corner, camping his little socks off, <laughs> effectively using his gun. Don't know why, but hey. No, that's the thing I know. If you look, when you go over the hill to take on the Ag Tiger, the pattern puts a shot into your rear. He's already there, mate. And that's why I'm saying there's nothing you could have done. Because that pattern was already there. And he's already trying to take you down. You would have taken out the Yag. No no question about that. But the pattern would have got there. And you, you know, you'd already put a shot into the you'd already put a shot into the Yag. Okay, so you'd have to put a second shot into him, which means you've only got one shot left in your magazine. You would have put one shot into the pattern, who was very, very healthy, putting you on your long reload. So hiding behind the Yag wouldn't have made an ounce of difference because the pattern is going to have a better reload than you. And he's going to out-DPM you. There is literally nothing you could have done, mate. Nothing. Not a thing. Because you, you would have only had one shot. You would have had basically only one shot to deal with the pattern. So that's the problem. And then... You know, like I said, don't beat yourself up over it. Seriously, you, there's nothing more you could do. Your team let you down. They bled far too quickly, far too easily, and in really, really silly positions without actually bleeding the enemy team. And that that's what let you down, to be fair. Excess. I had a guy do that the other day in a VK168. He only played the game backwards. And it's... It, it, Clearly a troll. Don't disagree with there, Mako. Mines for the upper tiers. Don't think it should be there, personally. I think there are bigger maps and better maps. That, uh, for example, I think Mirage would have been perfect for mine. Would have been a good one for mine for the for a replacement for mines. Mirage is a bigger map. It doesn't depend upon one salient spot, i.e., the hill. Um, and it's also a, a non-supremacy map. So what's the problem? Uh, Galaxy, if you stayed on top of the hill, the the, the, the the fact was there was still the Yo that was up there. He had to get away from the Yo as well. Forget the don't, 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 It was a one shot to the Yo, basically. That's the thing. <coughs> um, I mean, if you want, we I can do a breakdown on it and do a video on it. It's not a problem. And show you that. There's literally nothing you could have done. In fact, what I'll do, I'll, I'll put it back on. And we'll just go to a little bit. Because, seriously, I don't think there's anything you could have done. Looking at the way the map was, looking at the looking at the the positionings, etc, etc. I don't know why people are excited for the Badger buff. It doesn't need a bloody buff, as far as I'm concerned. Lots of people are saying that it desperately needs a buff. I don't believe the Badger needed a buff, to be fair. I mean, you know, if people, are, if people are struggling with the armor on a Badger, then they're not playing it right. <laughs> this is the honest answer. <laughs> well, I don't think they are anyway. Jack, do you think the Badger needed a buff? No, I think it's really how down and also yeah. I, I play like a heavy tank basically. Exactly. And it, it works. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Let's get to this midpoint. Exactly. It, it didn't need a buff. It didn't need it. Uh, what they're gonna? Do, I don't know where they're buffing it. If they're buffing its bottom plate, 
I mean, that's just ridiculous. Because that's the only that that's its biggest weak spot. Its biggest weak spot is his bottom plate. And uh, if they're buffing that, then you've taken away the weak spot. I mean, what's the point? Okay, so I'm going to start the game here, start the replay here. So at the moment, if, if I'm going to pause it. You can see on the minimap, it's it's six against one, and we've got four spotted. Okay, if I if I do this. So we've got Yag Tiger, you can see that. We've got the FV, and we've got a Yo. So we've got three spotted at this moment in time. And the 268. So there are two missing off the map. One, two, three, four. It's six. There are six on this team fighting him, and only four are spotted. So there are two missing at this moment. And they are, we've got the 268 who's AFK. Okay, 268 AFK, he's there and he's stuck. We've got the Yo, which if I remember rightly is relatively healthy. We've got a Yag Tiger, and we've also got the, uh, the Death Star. So we're missing two tanks at this moment in time. So let's jump back in, and you will see that the two tanks we are missing is the Patton and the E75 at this moment in time. So let's restart. So you can see here he's whittling them down. He's leaving the 268, no, no problem there. He's whittling them down, and whittling them down. Does well in a moment. He, he gets he gets gets some good shots into the yo. Now the yo is is clippable. Now the yo is basically a one shot. Very a generous. No, he's definitely a one shot. So the yo's a one shot. There's the pattern, and I just the pattern. I didn't I didn't catch it correctly then. But the pattern is very very healthy. Very healthy indeed. So. It's going to take a lot here. It gets gets a good shot into the into the Death Star. Clears the seventy five. Going to clear the Death Star now. Boom. And now this is where it becomes interesting. So he's going to roll over the hill. Right. So I'm going to stop it there because we got the Yag Tiger, who he has to clip out. He's on his reload. The two six eight. Forget about him. The Yo is a one shot. Now I'm going to keep rolling over the hill. Takes a shot from the Yag, but that's okay. He's now gonna put a shot into the Yag. Right, that's what I wanted to stop at. So. Because, there he is. He's on the hill already. Therein lies your problem. So, with the pattern now being there, He could go down, he could take out the Yag, but then he's got a problem because the pattern, as you'll see when I come back. So to take it, he's, he's got, he's loading his clip. So puts one in, misses. And if you have a look, that pattern is very healthy. You see the pattern is on 974 HP. He's only got two in there. So, even if he were to double put both those shots into that pattern, then the Yag's going to get him. He's got to therefore put the shot into the, into the Yag, which means the pattern is going to get him. There's nothing he can do. Literally nothing you can do. Because when you start rolling, when you start looking around the map, the, the Jag is trying to turn. You can see the Jag is trying to turn. So he's got a choice. Who does he put his shots into? The Yag Tiger or the Pattern? He can't clip the Pattern because he hasn't got because the Pattern's on nine hundred and something HP. So the best he can do on the Pattern is knock what six hundred out of him, seven hundred maybe. It's going to leave him on two hundred hit points, and then it's going to leave the Bat Shot on a very long reload where the Jag or the, even the Pattern can take him out. It's it's a no win scenario at the moment. No win. And he couldn't have stayed up there because the yo is up there and the pattern is on his way. So it's a, it's a really difficult one. Really difficult one. 
Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's and as you can see, he's, because he's a one-shot, the pattern one-shots him. There's nothing he could have done. Yeah. So that therein lies the problem. That's why I'm saying it, don't beat yourself up over it because with that pattern on 974 hit points, you couldn't have done it. You just couldn't have done it because the Yag Tiger's on 456, which meant he's a two shot. He's a two shot because the, the, the bat chat is what, knocking out, what is it, Jack? It's about 350 uh, top end alpha per shot, I think. So he's got to hit the Jag twice he can't clip out he, he can only clip out the jag which then leaves him very vulnerable to the pattern there's nothing he can do not a thing i'm afraid it's it's a, it's it's no win situation you did well when it was six against one to whittle them down to that position to be honest with you because a lot of players wouldn't have been able to do it but it, yeah, it's very, very, very difficult to do at the end. Clipping out the jag and then hiding behind the jag wouldn't wouldn't have helped. The pattern would have got you. So therein lies your problem. So as I say, don't beat yourself up, dude. You uh, you played well. Next time, pray for a better team. <laughs> at least pray for a team that's gonna that's gonna do about the same amount of damage that you alone did because that was one of your problems you did you did 6k damage and they did just less than that i think <laughs> and there's seven of them so <laughs> but you did well but you did well imagine side scraping in sp1c no i can't imagine side scraping in an sp1c <laughs> It'd be very difficult to be fair <laughs> Uh, Mako, if you watch a lot of my uh, streams, it's very rare that I use premium ammunition. Very rare. It, it's the last resort for me. Um, the reason I do that is because... Okay, a couple of things. Firstly, a lot of the guy, a lot of the pros I spoke to, okay, and I've, I've, I've rolled out a lot of tours, QTs and stuff, and training tours with them, and they make a big deal about penning. A huge deal a massive deal about making sure the shot pens uh, but before but, but, but they, they got me in some of the training to never use premium ammunition to get my shots better to aim better and to get to the weak points better and it's very rare that I use Pramo unless absolutely necessary so but don't don't forget Mako it doesn't cost gold. You could cost credits, Pramo. Change it around. But yeah, I mean, Jack, do you use a lot of Pramo? Yes. <laughs> Jack uses a lot of Pramo. There you go. Yes. But he's a better player than me. Whereas I'm still trying to get my shots to count. So I, I, I like the challenge of trying to get better, better accuracy by using by using APC by using the standard ammunition. But I I, I will switch to the Pramo on occasion. You know, for example, if I'm in a tank and there's an E100 in front of me, I'll easily switch to Pramo to get his cheeks. I haven't got a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that at all. But, uh, but generally, no. I, I, use, I use standard ammunition. And switch to Pramo only when necessary. In tournaments, however, it's a completely different kettle of fish. I mean... I will spam Pramo till I'm blue in the face because you need every shot to count. Uh, it gets a bit more tricky when you're when you're loading heat, but when uh, when you're in a tank that does uh, that just has AP or APCR, then believe me, in tournaments it's the APCR that's in the chamber, not the AP, because you need those shots to count. Because in tournaments you can win or lose by bouncing. Just one bounce can basically lose you the game. So. Oh my god, can't we stop? Say again? Hi, how are you? Hi. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you can send it to me, uh, I know. I'm not going to open the game again because it's just absolutely killing uh, the FPS. Um, I don't know, Retro Guy. A, a lot of people are making a big deal out of the 60TP. 
And I think a lot of people are making a big deal because they are ex or current World of Tanks PC players. And I believe that tank is in World of Tanks PC. And in that game, I understand it's, uh, it's pretty damaging. But that game's a bit of a different game because it's bigger maps, bigger teams, etc, etc. Now, we've had crossovers where they brought tanks from World of Tanks PC into Blitz. Scorpion G is a prime example for exa uh, as a case in point. And they're not the same tank. So the chances are Wargaming will change its parameters. It, it'll and they change... have tanks from World of Tanks. Say so again, sorry? So when when they do crossovers like that, they be, the only thing they do is they buff it. They, they make it do more less damage because of how less the map big of the maps are and stuff like that. No, no, they change them quite a lot. More Not than just really. that, it's more than just that. I thought. Um, I mean, they change it. They change its view range. They change. Uh, they don't. I don't know if they think some of them because some of them come in. They coming at a tier in Blitz. But it's not the tier they are in the in World of Tanks PC. Like I know there's, there's one tank that's come in at tier eight. That's tier ten in PC, I believe. I'm not sure because I don't play PC. I don't play the World of Tanks PC. Um, but I think I don't think it will be the same. I don't think it will be the same. Uh, so I don't think it's going to make the U100 redundant. I think what we're seeing at the moment is the PC player saying, "What well, if it comes with the same parameters as what it's got in PC? Then it is going." to uh, make the E100 irrelevant. But we've been here before, guys. I remember people saying, and I was one of those people because I was an idiot back then, that the VK-72 was going to make the E100 redundant, or the E100 was going to make the VK-72 redundant. And it hasn't. Both tanks are still in the game. Both tanks bring different things to the game, uh, to be fair. So I don't think any one tank makes another tank redundant. No, there is a lot of that galaxy, yes. The Chrysler K, everybody thought it was going to be super duper OP, but it's not. It's just a good tank. So. Well, I don't know. Uh, probably Rommel, they may change some of that. I don't know. And then and then you say, as you say there, Mike, you know, you, they've now got the VK90, a tank that I think Jack likes. That kind of makes that that a lot of people thought makes both of the E one hundred and the VK seventy two redundant. But again, it's a tank that brings something different to the game. They're not the same tanks, so. Oh, there you go. There you go, wannabe Rommel. They they will change it. They will change it. It won't be the same. So when when this uh, sixty TP hits the game, it will not be the same as what you get in, in World of Tanks PC. It'll be completely different, and the chances of it making any of the current super heavies redundant is probably slim. To be fair, so we'll see. We will see. But um, I mean, there's there's. And, uh, oh, and that's the other thing. Guys, guys, guys. Because I've seen the videos. And I, I did a video myself explaining that it's, it's, it's incorrect. Look, for those of you who are still thinking or under the impression that the 50B is getting a buff and the E3 or E4, whichever one it was, is getting a nerf, they're not. Neither are. Okay? The 50B is not getting a buff. It is not getting a buff on its turret. Now, this has come about because basically what happened was in the recent open test, they are changing the hit skin color to make it more real, to make it in line with what the armor profile is. Which means that now when you look at the 50B, you see it slightly different, slightly red on the turret. The armor, the armor profile hasn't changed. The penetration of that profile hasn't changed. Nothing has changed. Doesn't have better hit points, doesn't have more armor. It's exactly the same tank as it was previously. It's just the hit skins have changed colour. And everybody jumped on the bandwagon without really knowing about it. Going around saying, oh my god, the, 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 the 50B is being buffed. Oh, it's going to be buffed. It's going to be buffed. It's going to be buffed. It's not being buffed. And the same goes for the E3 or E4, whichever one it is. It's not getting a nerf. Okay. So, so guys, 
don't worry, it's, it's not a big deal. It's not happening. So there you go. There is a list of what is being released currently uh, from Wargaming on Blitz Hangar of what is the changes that are coming in 8.1 to, to various tanks. And there's quite a few, but a lot of them are, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing major. A lot of it isn't major, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, if we just have a look, if I, I'll just go through it now if you want. So you'll see what I mean by some of it. I mean, these are just the previews. This is what is already, I believe, been announced sort of by Wargaming. So the Badger is going to get a bit more speed and a bit more dispersion. The Hori at tier 9 is going to get a slight nerf with its traverse speed. The, 50, the AMX 5120 is going to have a slight nerf on its penetration. The T28 is going to get a slight buff on the penetration. That's both the prototype and the T28. So when you start looking at it, you start seeing, well, actually, it's not much. Engine power for the Hori Type 1 is going to be buffed. Penetration on the T34 II is going to be nerfed. The MX-5100 is going to be nerfed on the penetration. The P-44 Pantara is going to be nerfed on its penetration. When I say nerfed, I'm on about, it's going from 165 to 160. These aren't big things, guys. You know, the T-20 is going to get slight buff. The T-23, the T-26, the T-29, the M-6, all getting buffs. The T-25 is getting a slight nerf on its speed. So when you start going through it, you start to see, actually... There isn't massive, massive, massive changes coming. These are just tinkerings, just little tinkerings with the tanks, okay? Nothing more than that. I mean, one of the biggest ones is the Panther 2, the Panther, sorry, the Tier 7 Panther. That is having an HP nerf. So it did have 1,270 HP. It's now getting 1,250. So that's quite a big deal because that's HP. That's, that's different. But its armor hasn't changed, just as a lower HP by 20, 20 hit points. It's not much really. Uh, and when you start going through it all, it, it's nothing really major, not really. I mean like so many positive waves, maybe we can't lose. Uh, Hyper Spider 7 became a member, that was a while ago. And then you've got the updated armor, but the updated armor is not right, uh, basically, because it's just showing you the new hit skin, that's all, nothing more than that. So go and have a look at it, and you will see that it's, it's, it's not, it's not as major or massive as you think. Um, so don't, don't stress too much. Don't stress too much. Not just yet. These are just slight. They, they do this all the time. Slight tinkerings. Slight tinkerings here and there. So. Anyway. So what else? What else have we got? That's, that's, that's it really, so there you go, it's not like, uh, it's not massive, it's not massive. And as I said in my, in my video, don't, don't, don't be so quick to believe everything you hear. Because, you know, the likes of Blitzstars, Blitzhanger, these are, these are fantastic websites that everybody should be using, okay? Because they're an invaluable source. But, they're not officially affiliated to Wargaming. And the only time that we can rely on anything realistically is when wargaming announce it until then it it's likely to be changed and it's the same when you see the leaks videos okay so you see the leaks videos and they say oh this tank's broken it's going to be op it's going to be that it's going to be that look guys i'm a tester and i'll guarantee you this what i test generally isn't what you we get in the game and the reason that's the reason why we test them okay we test them to say this is broken this needs changing that doesn't work this should do it should be doing this Drop the reload, increase the armor. Drop the armor, increase the damage. Decrease the damage. Do you know? Blah blah blah. And they get changed, totally changed. I mean, the turtle is not the tank I tested. The turtle in the game is not the tank I tested. The tank I tested was basically almost broken compared to what we now get. It, it, that's the thing. So don't 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 think that every, what you're being told is gospel. It's not gospel. It's, it's, it's opinion. And until it comes out from Wargaming officially, the chances of it being changed are very, very high indeed. Okay.
it's very high so, so just always be careful guys um, with what you're what you're what you're getting and if, in, unless they turn around and say this is from wargaming itself take it with a pinch of salt it's good to know it's good to keep your eye on but always remember in the back of your mind that actually it may change it may change So, anyway, what else are we looking at? <laughs> yeah, that's what they do, Mako. They, they, they always do it. They, they tinker with tanks. Because what happens is, and a lot of people, again, don't know this, Wargaming has a shed load of data, okay, on every single tank. And they know all the parameters of everything. They know how the tanks are performing. And what they do, they take that... Well, it wasn't a very nice thing to say, to be fair. I don't think. Let me find out if it was a nice thing to say. Shall we? That makes no sense. Whatever that, uh, whatever that chap said. That's not a very nice thing to say, I don't think. I don't think it's Russian. It's Ukrainian, isn't it? So I should get my Russian wife to come and translate it for me. Yeah, it's not a very nice thing to say. I mean, I don't tell you to uh, F you, you biatch. <laughs> Which is basically, it's Ukrainian, by the way, that he's saying it. That, that they're speaking, I believe, there. It's not Russian. So, not a very nice thing to say at all. In fact, it's so unnice that I'm going to remove it. Boom. There we go. That's what that means, excess. But it, that's not Russian. Um, and the first part is basically blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Mako, I was reading the Russian guy. Uh, uh, who's called... Dennis. So, Dennis. Dennis, why would you say nasty things? Anyway. Um, yeah, I can't remember what I was saying now. But there we go. <laughs> yeah, so be careful of leaks. That's all I have to say. Just be careful of leaks. Good to know, interesting to see what's coming forward, but don't rely on the information therein. Yeah, so they collect all this data on every single tank in the game, and they know where the tanks are performing or not performing, and they tinker only little bits and bobs here and there to balance everything. Um, they, they tinker with it just to balance out and I know that sounds weird when you've got the likes of annihilators and smashes in certain tiers, but they do tinker with it to balance out the the, the, the game and the tanks. So that that's why you see these things happening on occasion. So don't take, don't read too much into it. So it's just a it's just a balancing, and they can't they can't do it all in one go. So it's like you know if a tank is underperforming. They can't suddenly say, it's underperforming, uh, let's suddenly give it all this stuff to make it perform. Because then it just breaks it completely. <laughs> I don't know when they're removing it, Mike. I think that there's talk about it on this update. Um, but I don't, I don't know if it is this update or the next one, is the honest answer. Or at another update further in the future. But it is going. It's definitely going. The annihilator and the smasher will never be balanced. They they will they will never be changed. Their parameters will always stay as is. Uh, Want to be rommel? They won't change it. The reason being the premium tanks, and uh, it's very difficult to uh, change a premium tank. Because the reason they won't change a premium tank is because people have bought them. Uh, simple as that. But uh, again, again, a lot of people make a big deal out of those two tanks. And in fairness. 
they're overrated. Don't get me wrong, in the right hands, like many tanks, they, they are very, 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 very dangerous tanks. But they're not impossible. They're not. They're not. Uh, they're not impossible to defeat. Not in the slightest. Not in the slightest. Um, I mean, I do think that the Annihilator should get its super duper boost removed. To be fair, and that would make it a lot, uh, a lot better. No, they'll never change them. Want to be Ronald? They'll never change those two tanks. There's no point. Won't, won't do anything. To be honest with you, we won't do anything. Uh, in fairness, anyway. But anyway, has anybody got anything else to say? If not, then we'll we'll knock on the head because we've been going for just over two hours, and we've got all the main points out there. And oh, it's Saturday, and no doubt people have got better things to do than listening to some bearded guy rabbiting on about a pixelated game. <laughs> So, if nobody's got anything else, we'll knock it on the head and we'll do it again next week. Because that's what we do. Um, and I should be back next week. Uh, there's going to be a lack of content and streams from me over the coming week. Because I've got a house move. So, it's going to be difficult. Mm. Yeah. yeah are, you like... planning, are, are you planning to stream um, the <coughs> championship? I don't know. It depends if I can get my internet up and running in time, basically. Uh, I can't... I the, the, problem, the problem with this part of the world is they say they'll do it today and they end up doing it a week later. Um, so <laughs> you, can't, you can't actually guarantee anything. That's the problem. That's why it's a bit up in the air at the moment. Um, this is why I haven't been able to commit to any of the uh, summer season, basically. Because it's just too uncertain. And I'd hate to say, yes, I can do it, uh, to find out that I've got no internet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh. <coughs> so, but we'll see. And anyway, on that, Jack, Candy Cart, Candy Charms, thank you for joining in on yeah. Discord. Uh, the rest thank of you, you, thank you for coming in onto YouTube. And uh, hopefully I'll catch you next week. House move notwithstanding. Until then, guys. Don't forget, it's a bloody game. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. No, I play EU and uh, US, well, NA, and Asia. Um, but because of the ping, I generally play EU and Asia a lot more. But I do play NA. I played NA last week um, quite, quite nicely. And I'll probably play NA tomorrow. I don't know if I can. Because at the weekend it's probably easier, although a lot of people don't like playing in the weekend. It's the, the thing that kills me with NA is firstly the time limit, the time zone, because I'm about 12 hours away from most people in NA. Um, so, you know, it's 8 o'clock in the evening for me now. When Secondly, the ping. The ping has been dreadful, like 300, 400 ping, which means I can only play heavy tanks. And people, people don't like that. So anyway, we will see. We will see. Until then, guys, have a good one. And as I said, remember, it's a game. Try and enjoy it. Don't don't beat yourself up every five minutes. It's not worth it. Get out there and enjoy it. And we'll take it. We'll take it one step at a time. And together, we'll educate the player base to make a better player base. Until yes, then, sir. have a good one, guys. Bye for now. Bye. Have a good day.